Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to talk to you about implicit differentiation in this video. If I want to take the derivative with respect to x of regular old sine x, this is just some function of x and nothing fancy is going on here, then we would simply use our standard rules for derivatives and say that this derivative is cosine x as long as we know that definition. The derivative with respect to x of sine of y is a different creature entirely. The idea here is I have a sine function. Inside of that sine function I have y, but remember that y is also some function of x. So the chain rule is going to give us extra information out of that particular inside piece. So the derivative of sine of y should be cosine y, but remember that y is also a function of x. So think of that like a composite function. Using the chain rule, we also need to take the derivative of the inside. So that will also give us times the derivative of the inside, which we call dy dx, or if you use the prime notation, we might write this as cosine of y times y prime. Okay, so the idea is again, here this is just x, a function of x, so we take the derivative normally. Here we have y inside, which is a function of x additionally. So inside of the sine operation, we need to then use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which is either dy dx or y prime. Sometimes when we're solving an equation for y, it will be tedious for us to do, or it might even be impossible for us to do by hand. And if we want to know dy dx or y prime in these circumstances, then implicit differentiation is a really nice thing for us to use. So think about here I have a circle with a radius 5, and if I want to find the slope of the line tangent to my circle at the point 4 comma 3 over here at this point, this is the equation for my circle, right? I have x squared plus y squared equals 25, and I want to find the slope of the tangent line at the point. In other words, I need to find the derivative and then plug in values that will give me the slope that I need. Now, You'll notice this is not actually a function. A circle is not a function. In order to treat pieces of the circle like a function, what we would need to do is if we solve this for y, which is not terribly bad, right? We would subtract the x squared to the other side, and then getting rid of the square on the y, we would root both sides and get that y is either plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. It's not terrible. We can certainly do that. But now this is two different functions, right? Because this circle by itself is not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test. The positive version of the root, just regular old root 25 minus x squared, is the upper half of the circle, and the negative root, so negative square root 25 minus x squared, is the lower half of the circle here. So we get an upper semicircle and a lower semicircle depending on which version of the root that we're using. So once I've solved this, I then have to think about, if I want to find the derivative, which function actually am I going to use? Which one goes through 4 comma 3? It's actually the upper semicircle, so I would know that I need to use the positive version of this root. Then I would take the derivative and then I would plug in my information about my points to get my slope. And that's a little bit tedious to do, right? So what we're going to do actually with this is use implicit differentiation instead and just show you how this works. With implicit differentiation, I just take the derivative of the entire thing straight across with respect to x all at once. x squared plus y squared equal to 25, and we'll just go one term at a time from left to right. Remember that any term that has a y value in it, we'll need to use the chain rule and we'll get a y prime or a dy dx, okay? I'm going to go ahead and write dy dx here so it's super clear when we get a derivative of y. You can use the prime notation if you like. So if I take the derivative with respect to x of x squared, that's all just x's, so this is regular power rule. Two comes out front and the power goes down by one, so we get two x plus the next term is a y term. So I do the normal power rule, 2 comes out front, multiplies in front, power goes down by 1, but because there's a y in here when I took the derivative of this, I also need to multiply by the derivative of the inside y, chain rule gives us a dy dx there, equal to, next term the derivative of 25, 25 is just a constant, so the derivative of that would be 0, and so now this is the expression we get just using implicit differentiation, differentiating straight through the equation from left to right.
What we'll actually need to do to find dy dx though is now solve. We need to get it by itself on one side of the equal sign, right? So I'll need to move my not dy dx term to the other side, right? So we'll go ahead and subtract that to the other side. We'll say that 2y dy dx is equal to negative 2x. And then to solve dy dx, we'll divide both sides by 2y, right? So we would get dy dx is equal to negative 2x over 2y. And of course, we can simplify that, right? And we can get negative x over y. Now, what you'll notice for our derivative is that we didn't just get an expression involving x with this implicit differentiation, and that happens often, okay? We actually got an expression that involves x and y. So when I go to plug in, I won't just be plugging in an x value to find my slope of my line at that point. I'll actually also be plugging in a y value, right? So if I plug in my x is 4 and my y is 3, so one way we write this sometimes is dy dx, and we'll draw a line, and then we'll go ahead and say 4 comma 3 next to the line. That tells us we're taking the derivative at the point 4 comma 3 and plugging in 4 for x and 3 for y gives us negative 4 thirds. Let's do another example here. If we have x cubed plus y cubed equals 2xy, we want to calculate dy dx. So we'll use implicit differentiation. We'll go ahead and start over here. So the derivative with respect to x of x cubed plus y cubed equals 2xy. We'll go one term at a time just like before from left to right. And anytime we hit a y and take the derivative of a y term, then we'll need to use the chain rule and we'll get a dy dx out of that. So the derivative of x cubed is just a regular power rule. 3 comes out front, power goes down by 1, 3x squared. For the next term, so plus here, power rule, 3 comes out front, power goes down by 1, get y squared. But because this has a y, the chain rule gives us times dy dx equal to. Now when I do this, this is actually a product. I have 2x times y. So I have 2x as my f in my product rule and my y is g in my product rule. So I need to use the product rule. We'll do the derivative of 2x, which is 2 times leaving g alone would just be y plus, now leaving f alone, we will have 2x, and taking the derivative of g, I will get dy dx. Now notice what happened here, right? This 2 is f prime. There was no y in this, so we just did a normal derivative and got 2. g, I didn't take the derivative here, so there's no reason for me to get a dy dx here. I just copied g down as part of the product rule plus this was leaving f alone. And now in my product rule here, g prime means taking the derivative of something that has y in it, we should get dy dx. The derivative of y is really just one, and then times the derivative of the inside, derivative of y is dy dx here, okay? So that's a little bit of additional info on why we got a y here and a dy dx here. Okay, what we'll need to do to solve for dy dx is actually get all the dy dx terms on one side and all the not dy dx terms on the other side. So you'll notice I have a dy dx term here and here, so let's get those. I'll get them all on the left side, so I'll move this last term over. So we'll say 3y squared dy dx if I move this term over, that would be minus 2x dy dx. And then what I want to do is I already have 2y over here, but this term is not a dy dx term. Let's move it over to the other side. So I'll keep the 2y that I have here. And then subtracting the 3x squared over, we'd get minus 3x squared. And now here's what we're going to do. To now solve for dy dx, we need to just factor it out from each term. Okay, so we'll go ahead and say dy dx times the quantity 3y squared minus 2x, so we've factored it out on the left side, is equal to 2y minus 3x squared. And now just to solve, we just need to divide this over to the other side, right? So dividing by what's in the parentheses there gives us our dy dx, and that is 2y minus 3x squared 
all over 3y squared minus 2x. All right, let's do one more example here. I've got another one with some product rule going on here. We want to find the slope of the line tangent to this equation at the point negative 3, 1. So we'll be plugging in negative 3 for x and 1 for y once we get our dy dx. But first we need to use implicit differentiation to get that. You can really kind of see when you look at these problems, if it's really difficult to solve for y, you can't get y equals very easily, then it's probably better to use implicit differentiation. So let's go ahead and do that here. You'll notice we have a y in one of the terms and we have a y squared in the other and so it makes it really difficult to factor out y and get y only by itself on one side of the equal sign. So implicit differentiation here. Now each of these is a product rule, right? So in this one I'm going to use x squared is my f and y is my g. So just doing this first term here, if I do f prime, that will be 2x, leave g alone will be y, plus, now leave f alone would give me x squared. The derivative of g, let's go ahead and use the prime notation in this one. Just we've used dy dx so far, let's go ahead and use the prime notation. So times y prime, that's the derivative of y. So this is my product rule, that's the first term there. So this one is done. Let's go ahead and use this one now. f is going to be x here, and g is going to be y squared in my product rule. So we'll say plus, I'll go ahead and actually put these in brackets so you can see that's my first one there. All right, so f prime would be one, and leaving g alone would give us y squared plus, now we'll leave f alone, so we'll get x, and then times g prime, so the derivative of y squared would be 2y, but since it's a y term, and we're taking the derivative of something involving y, we need to multiply by the derivative, we'll call it y prime here instead of dy dx. So that is our derivative of the xy squared part going across the equal sign, equal to the derivative of six is going to be zero, right? That's just a constant. Okay, so one thing you might notice here, it's maybe harder to spot where your y primes are because they look more like everything else. So dy dx may be easier to spot getting all your dy dx terms together. But if you like using y prime because it's shorter to write, of course you can do that as well. So I've got a y prime here and I also have a y prime here. So I'm going to go ahead and keep those on this side and I'm gonna bump everything over to the other side. So here this is x squared y prime. And then I also have x times 2y times y prime. So this is actually 2xy y prime. So plus 2xy y prime. All right, those are my y prime terms. Let's move everything over to the other side that is not that. So they're going to change signs. So this is 2xy. That'll move over and become negative 2xy. And then here I have y squared. Moving that over will become minus y squared. And now remember what I need to do once I have my terms on this side, I'll factor the y prime out. So this will be y prime times the quantity x squared plus 2xy equal to all this stuff I have over here, negative 2xy minus y squared. And then to solve y prime, we just need to divide by what's in parentheses, right? So we'll get y prime is equal to what I already have on the right side, negative 2xy minus y squared, all over the stuff in parentheses, right? x squared plus 2xy. All right, if this is our y prime, then we'll need to plug in x equals negative 3 and y equals 1. So we'll say y prime at the point negative 3 comma 1. Let's go ahead and do this. So negative 2 times a negative 3 times a 1 would be our negative 2xy. Negative 2 times negative 3 times 1 would be 6 there for that term minus y squared would be 1 squared. So that's 1 over x squared would be negative 3 squared, that would be 9, plus 2xy, x times y would be negative 3, times 2, that would be negative 6 there. And so we get 5 on top and 3 on the bottom, so we get 5 thirds as our slope of the tangent line to this equation at the point negative 3, 
comma one. Okay, so our general outline of how you do implicit differentiation, you're just going to differentiate every term of the equation starting from the left, going left to right all the way through the equation. Remember that any time that you get a y term and you're taking the derivative of a y term, you'll get a dy dx or you'll get a y prime out of that term from the chain rule. So remember that part. Second part, you'll want to combine all your dy dx terms or all your y prime terms on one side and get all the stuff that doesn't have a dy dx or a y prime on the other side. Lastly, you'll factor your dy dx or your y prime out and then you'll just divide by what's left and you'll have your answer for dy dx or y prime. All right, we have another video coming up after this actually finding implicit second derivatives. So you might want to stick around and check that out. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.